Various important arpeggios give us more options for what to use when improvising against dominant seventh chords. Learn these here. There's a PDF file that goes with this video. To get it, go to www.petemartin.info, click Videos, and scroll down to Barry Harris for Jazz Mandolin. It really helps my channel if you click like, so please do that so more folks can find these videos. I really appreciate it. In the previous videos in this series, we have seen many ideas for playing against dominant seventh chords. In this video, we dive deeper into Barry's vast musical knowledge and discover more great ideas. This is what Barry calls important arpeggios on dominant seventh chords. These important arpeggios occur on 1, 5, and flat 7 of the dominant scale. For the examples in this video, we will look at the important arpeggios on C7. As we have seen in previous episodes, Barry used terms different from what is now standard jazz music theory taught at university levels. By arpeggio, Barry means a triad or three note chord with the first note duplicated on top. This makes a four note run. The first important arpeggio starts on the root of C7, the note C. The triad starting on C are the notes C, E, and G. We then duplicate the first note, C, on top of the triad. We need to play this ascending and descending. See this in example one. The next arpeggio starts on E. The notes are E, G, and C, and we duplicate the note E on top. We need to play this ascending and descending. See this in example two. The last arpeggio starts with G. The notes are G, C, E, and G is duplicated on top. We need to play this ascending and descending. So see this in example three. Practice these from as low to as high as you can play in first position. See this in example four. If you find this video useful, I ask that you consider supporting this channel and my website through my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash Martin. For the very low price of $3 a month, you allow me to keep adding content on my YouTube channel and website. I also teach online lessons if anyone is interested. Thank you. The second important arpeggio starts on the five. This will be the triad G, B flat, and D, or a G minor triad. Let's learn and practice these just like we did the arpeggios in the previous example. See this in example five. important arpeggio starts on the flat 7. This will be the triad B flat, D, and F, or a B flat major triad. Let's learn and practice these just like we did in the previous example. See this in example 6.
For the playing examples that follow, think of the chord progression in the A part of Honeysuckle Rose in F. Let's use bars 3, 4, and 5. Bar 3 is G minor 7, bar 4 is C7. This is a 2 minor 7 to 5 dominant 7. As we have seen previously when improvising, Barry thought of this as only C7. Because of this, we will look at the important arpeggios on C7 in this video. Bar 5 resolves to F. On the first measure of 251, let's start with a chromatic lead in note to the important arpeggio on the fifth of the C7 chord, the GBD arpeggio. This leads into a scale line with two sixteenth notes, and I use a pull off, and into Barry's five and four phrases to finish on the F chord. See this in example seven. Two, three, four, one, two. Starting on G, we surround the note F and into the flat 7 important arpeggio on the C7 chord. We then descend the C7 scale with an extra half step and make a chromatic approach to the note F when the F major 7 chord arrives. See this in example 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Your assignment is to make some phrases with the dominant 7 important arpeggios in many keys. Play some tunes and see if you can fit some of these into your improvising. Be sure to subscribe, click the bell icon to be notified of new videos, click like, and check out my website and Patreon page. I'm Pete Martin. Thanks for watching.